There are times in life when it feels like all the fates are against you. Everything you try, it fails. Whether it's a new diet, a new job, or a new budget, it can be easy to admit defeat and simply give up. However, some people manage to rise to the occasion and see failure as an opportunity. We're being joined by local author and motivational speaker, Jake Neeland, who has written a book about what he learned from his own failure called Why You Need to Fail. He says that in the case of long-time goals and happiness, it is possible to find the positives in failing and grow bigger and better because of it. Welcome, Jake. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Yeah, I'm excited to be back. Thanks for having me. I want you to start off by describing what failure is and not even necessarily like the definition, but what the feeling of failure is. Yeah, the feeling of failure is simply when we have a task or we have a goal at hand and we don't succeed at it. And the actual definition of failure is interesting because the definition is lack of success which is super interesting because I think success means something different to each and every one of us, or at least it should, right? And when we fail, we don't come up with a, a goal that we were going towards or whatnot. We feel like a failure, right? We feel like a loss. But lack of success, we should be living on our own terms, right? We should be defining success by our own terms and simply how we are living, right? Uh, success is not determined by a job title or a degree or a job promotion, your salary, et cetera. It simply is defined by how you are living. And I think that's super interesting because when we get caught up in failure, we think that everything's a loss, but really there is some light at the end, end of the tunnel. There are lessons that we can learn from our quote unquote failures. Why do you think that there is such a negative feeling associated with failure? I think a lot of it comes down to the way we were brought up in societal norms. Um, sports, I'm from a big sports background, so sometimes I think of failures as losses essentially in games or whatnot, but that's not always the case, right? Even in sports or even in jobs or your career, when you quote unquote fail at something, you're just finding another avenue. You're finding another lesson or another way to do things, right? When one door closes, another opens. And I think that's the case for each and every one of us, right? We all have those places in life where we feel like we're stuck and we feel like we're failing, but really we're just finding a new avenue towards something that is maybe more aligned with us or is maybe more um, true to ourselves. We just have to go through that tough time and that failure, that misstep in order to get there. And that's what really inspired you to write this book because you went through your own journey when you had your own experience. Do you wanna share a little bit about kind of what you went through? Yeah, so when I was on in January, I talked a little bit about just the wild ride that I've been on. And we're all on our wild rides, right? Even your viewers are here today as well. We all are on our own journey and mine was no different. It was uh, full of ups and downs, right? I moved from the Dakotas in the Midwest, went out to Colorado and just experienced a lot of ups and downs out there. And what took me a while to understand was, what, was that this was building me towards something again better for me more aligned etc now I'm getting into writing I'm getting into public speaking motivational speaking and coaching and stuff like that well I would have never been on this path if I wouldn't have gone through my failures that I went through out in Colorado right and I think it's important for viewers to understand as well too that again not everything is a failure it's more of an opportunity right beginnings always hide themselves in ends and I think that's super important to realize is that when you are going through a tough time it is hard to actually stop and slow down and actually see like okay I'm going through a tough time what's actually going on here you know what is going wrong and I think when you actually acknowledge that you actually see the light at the end of the tunnel and you see that new opportunity moving forward so when I was out in Colorado I had to slow down and understand like where is this taking me right what did I learn from this experience and then that provided me with the new door to open to um, which is where I'm at now. I want to talk a little bit about what we can do when we kind of get in this rut because whether we're in a kind of going through an experience, a failed relationship, a failed job, I mean, a lot of our identity can sometimes get wrapped up in that and that's who we are. And once that part of us is gone, we kind of lose who we are and we can get in this rut of almost like a depression and we don't really know what to do. So like you explained how you went through your own journey of feeling like this, what were some things that you decided to do to help get you out of that to where you are today rather than just sitting there going through the days, not really doing anything to grow? Yeah, and I've talked about this in my first book when we talked about gratitude. A lot of times when we're stuck, we feel like we're coasting through life and we don't really have any direction. And I heard a quote a while back. It said, when you're stuck, start to do things that you enjoyed doing as a kid again. And I thought that was super interesting and pretty cool. Like we grow up 
at ease just being a kid, right? And, and living really just having fun. And I think it's super important. So for me, that was getting outside, getting outdoors and hiking. It was getting away from the devices and TV and social media. Feeding your media, soul. Feeding your soul, right? Mm -hmm. um, playing basketball, working out, like feeling physically fit and stuff like that, just to get my mind away from everything that was going wrong. And I think that's super important because it can be um, a part of everyone's journey is like really slow down and actually acknowledge where you're at, what's missing in life, where are your holes at, and then feeding those with things that you do enjoy doing, you know, whether it's playing guitar, um, journaling, reading a book, whatever it may be, those things help you get through those tough times because those are stuff that, again, feeds your soul, like you said. And I mm -hmm. think that's super important because it's super easy to do as well, too. And a big thing, too, one of the talking points we wanted to get out there is spending time alone, especially when you are going through these emotions. You don't want to feel them. But it's important to do that. So, and that's a lot of what you did was spending time alone when you were out in Colorado. And why do you think it's so important for people to spend time alone, process those emotions, and actually feel those feelings? I think it goes back to acknowledgement. A lot of times when we make a mistake or a misstep or we quote unquote fail, we think about where we're at and we don't understand where we need to get to. And I think it's important to really slow down and appreciate those things. For me, spending time alone helped me a lot because our lives are very, very busy, right? Mm -hmm. We're pulled in so many different directions. Um, we have information at our fingertips. Uh, a lot of times we're comparing ourselves to other on social media, which can add to anxiety, can add to depression. It can just crumble and, and get your mind spinning in so many different ways. Well, when you're alone and you're spending time actually reflecting and acknowledging what's going on, you're actually be, you're able to clear your mind a little bit. You're able to slow down and actually appreciate where you're at and show some gratitude like we've talked mm -hmm. about before too, right? You get centered, you get realigned when you're actually slowing down and appreciating what's going on around you. And then you can tend to the outside stuff and you know help others and appreciate what's going on. But it takes time to slow down first in order for your in order to get yourself there. Exactly, it's all part of the healing process. So thank you so much, Jake, for coming in here and turning failure not into a negative thing, but looking at the positives. So thank you so much. Always, thank you. We still have more Kelloland Living coming up after this break. Stay with us.